Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to our spirit home. The Celebration Singers will introduce our service today. Please stand and join the party. Lift it to the stars, dancing the glory, whirling the grace. See God in every face. See God in every face. See God in every face. Yes, here we are, the faces of God in all our glory. Good morning again. I'm Lainey Mauger, and welcome to our spirit home, Unity of Wilmington. Anybody here for the first time this day? Anybody here for the second or third time? Wonderful. We're all here together. This is terrific. We have a grateful day today. Yesterday was our spring market, moderately successful because of the weather. However, our planting was very successful because of the weather. And our plants are now very well watered, which is a terrific thing. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for participating in all of these activities. It was great fun. Our uh, program today is being technically monitored by Christopher Dean, who is in the back doing the sights and the sounds. <laughs> Yay, Christopher. Our music director is Katie Deese. Our soloist, Terrell Williams. Our speaker is Reverend Ellen. And our prayer uh, world, who sure, prayer chaplain is Teresa Rodriguez. And she'll do the daily word and she'll meet us later. I ask you all to join me in our underlying principle, please. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. From there flow our three affirmations. I am a beloved expression of God. I am here for holy purpose. I am right place at the right time right now. Now, Teresa will do our daily word. Okay, so the um, affirmative words are for today, April 23rd, pray for others. And the uh, affirmation is, I pray, as I pray, I affirm the activity of God in your life and mine. I am honored by the trust of those who ask me to pray with them. Whatever I am asked to pray about, my responsibility is always the same, to recognize all qualities of God are active, even in the most challenging circumstances. I remain steadfast, affirming this truth. If I have been asked to pray for healing, I release all thought of illness. 
I affirm divine life is active in every cell. I see harmony and perfect function restored. If I am praying for abundance, I entertain no thought of lack. I affirm divine wisdom, love, and understanding, guiding the one with whom I pray to make wise, prospering choices. As I affirm the truth for all who have asked for prayer, my awareness of God's activity in my life increases also. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, just as it is well with your soul. Um, the book of John 3, thir- three and um, one, first one and second sentence. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> now, Terrell. Everything has its season, everything has its time. Show me your reason, and I'll soon show you a rhyme. Cats fit on the windowsill, children fit in the snow. So why do I feel I don't fit in anywhere I go? Rivers belong where they can ramble. Belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the sky. Every man has his daydreams, every man has his goal. People like the way dreams have us sticking to the soul. Have the lightning, nightingales have their song. Don't you see, I want my life to be something more than long. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gonna find my corner of the sky. So many men seem destined to settle for something small. But I won't rest until I know I'll have it all. So don't ask where I'm going, just listen when I'm gone. And far away you hear me singing softly to the dawn. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the Give Terrell another round of applause, please. It's always such a gift to have Terrell sing with us, for us, through, through spirit, right? Oh, well, welcome everyone. I'm not Dr. Ellen. I, for, I forgot who I was for a moment. <laughs> who am I? I've got to find my corner of the sky. Let's do that together. Let's do that together. We're going to take that into our meditation today. So I invite everybody just to take a deep breath in. (sighs) Close your eyes if it's comfortable. Mm. And we're going to...
going to go on a journey to find our corner of the sky. So picture yourself running, walking, even floating down a river, through a field, and just open up to the beauty, to the expansiveness that is this beautiful world that we live in. See the birds in the sky. They know where their corner is. Look below you. If you're in a river, you see the, the fish swimming. And they know where their corner is. Now look within, within your heart, within your soul. You are being called to be who you are meant to be. Be all you can be in all areas of your life in all ages and stages of your life. For you have no corner. You have the entire universe. Expand into the unlimited potential of being who you are. Breathe that in. And there is no place better than where you are right now. For you are always in the right place at the right time. And as you continue to drift or run or fly, you know that no matter where you go, you can always come back home to who you are, a divine expression of God, one with everything and everyone on this planet and beyond. Because we know we can never be separated from spirit because we are spirit. And in that truth, we never have to find ourselves. We just need to come home. And so let's just take a deep breath in. Release. Another deep breath in. Release. And one more, nice deep breath and bring your arms all the way up to the sky, reaching up, open your eyes and just look up at the expansiveness of who and what you are. And let's just bring it all back here. Mm. Go ahead, if you're still in that place, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and bring your focus and attention right back here. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. <laughs> oh, I do feel like I'm flying. Anybody else? Yeah. I love that. Find the corner of your sky, and you know what? We don't need to find that corner, because we are always, always where we're supposed to be all the time. So today, my talk is, life is a picnic. Life is a picnic, and you know what today is? Today is World Picnic Day. <laughs> it is National Picnic Day, and that's one of the reasons why I actually chose today's topic. Um, as you know, I like to pick something that is, um, you know, contemporary, right? What are we celebrating today? And it's also spring, and we had our spring, I call it the spring fling yesterday. 
<laughs> and that was a lot of fun. And I did get to do some planting. And that was also so much fun because I've always been a little intimidated by planting, because I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning. How many of you don't know everything? <laughs> right? <laughs> Two hands up, right? Yeah, I don't know everything. <laughs> so it's good to learn new things and realize we don't have to be perfect the first time we do it. And that's what kind of makes it fun if we let go of that, oh my God, I've got to be good at it. Everyone's going to be looking at me thinking, oh, well, she's a minister, or she's this, or she's that, or he's this, or he's that. Well, they, they need to be good at everything. Well, we're not good at everything. We have to learn. But let me get back to my, my talk title. So picnic. So I looked up what is the true meaning, you know, picnic. And it actually is from the French word picnique. Anybody speak French? Because that wasn't, I, I spoke Spanish in, in schools. No, no French speakers? So if I get it wrong, no one's going to know. <laughs> uh, picnic. And it actually means a social gathering where each brings a share of food. Each brings their share. And the phrase, life is a picnic, is all about you know, this state of mind where life doesn't need to be hard. We can just relax. We can enjoy. We can have fun. And you know, it really is a metaphor for life. I really believe, you know, life as a picnic is a metaphor for life because it is about our frame of mind. It's how do we see our lives, right? Do we choose, you know, to, to believe that life is hard and that I have to be perfect at everything and, it, you know, that's what makes it hard, I have to work so hard? Or, you know, can it be easy? Can it be like the river that knows when it flows or the eagle that just flies or the fish that just swim? For us, we just are in the flow of life. And it's a beautiful way to, to live your life. Life is a picnic. So I have three lessons that we're going to explore in our talk today, in my talk today. And I've got to watch this. I feel like everything's moved forward, <laughs> right? Because when the chairs got put back, everything's moved forward. So I feel like I've got to move forward too. But, um, so you know, the first lesson is, you know, fill your basket with goodness. Fill your basket with goodness. I mean, what is in your basket? What is your basket? Right, so there's two ways to think about that, right? Our basket could be our human form, right? What is in your basket? What are your beliefs? You know, what, what are your, you know, ideas about life? And when you think about, you know, bringing a basket to your picnic, the picnic of life, it's also all of your life experiences. So we think about what are we filling our basket with from the moment we're born until the moment we transition, right? Education, right? relationships, all those experiences that we have. Right? Are we filling our basket with things that we want to carry with us? Right? So what is in your basket? So you know, when you bring a picnic basket, what are you bringing to that picnic? Right? You're not bringing the food that you threw out in the trash, are you? <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But if you are bringing negativity, hey, take it out of your basket. Unpack that. Leave that behind. As a matter of fact, compost that, as they say. That is one That is one thing I am going to learn how to do this year is do some composting. Uh, <clears throat> so I have an affirmation for us, of course. So our affirmation for today is, my basket is overflowing with abundance. Let's say that together. My basket is overflowing with abundance. Yes, and I'm reading uh, many books, but I brought two with me today. And In the Flow, how many of you have read um, Eric Butters, Butterworth, In the Flow? Excellent book. Yeah, I might just do a whole series on this one at some point. <coughs> um, but there is a couple things here I wanted to share. So it, with our affirmation in the chapter on the reality of afflu affluence, he says, life asks of you only that you flow with it, that you do not resist its exorable bubbling forth, and that you do not crawl into dark corners of insufficiency and erect barriers. Thus, the secret of prosperity and success is that it comes through you 
and not just to you, right? It comes through you. And that's the thing that we have to remember, right? My basket is overflowing with abundance all the time because it's coming through me. So let's take a look at this one. A picnic is more than eating a meal. It is a pleasurable state of mind. And how many of you like picnics? Okay, most hands, <laughs> most hands. So I love going on picnics. And this is actually my picnic dress. <laughs> Remember last week I talked about going shopping with my daughter, right? We went to um, Fairy Consignment Store. I forgot the name of the exact name of the store, yeah. <laughs> um, and I bought the dress I wore last week, and this was one of the dresses I had tried on. And as I walked out of the dressing room with it on, it, almost simultaneously, I said, I love it. And my daughter said, I hate it. <laughs> and we both burst out laughing because it was clearly a generational difference. Because there was a lot of other women my age who were like, I love that dress. It looks so cute on you. So I was like, perfect. And I actually do have, I think, curtains <laughs> that are the same pattern. I don't know if Lane is in here somewhere, but she probably also has material in this as well. But, um, you know, so life is more than just eating outside. I mean, I love picnics. I love being outside, period, end of story. If it's a beautiful day, I want to be outside. And as my husband knows, I will drag him anywhere to the beach, to the park, wherever we can go to be outside. Now, I used to do that with my kids, too. I would drag them, literally drag them, because... They don't like eating outside. Too many bugs. The flies, the bugs. You know, they just didn't like it. And I'm like, I don't, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, and, the, and the irony is, I mean, it's so funny, because my daughter and I were at Cargo District last week, and we were sitting outside eating, and we were sitting on a picnic table, and she said, Mom, we should get, you know, a bench for the backyard. I'm like, really? Are you going to really sit on it? Are you going to go outside in the backyard? So she's coming around. She's coming around. And, and the truth is, it's about our mindset. Right? We're not just bringing food to a picnic. We're bringing our joy. We're bringing positivity. We're bringing you know, our love. We're bringing ourselves to that picnic. Because it's also about sharing with other people and sharing ourselves. So you think about... You know, yeah, I can sit at my dinner table and I can have dinner inside, right? We could stay comfortable in our routines. But, you know, life is so much more than that. Life is so much more. You know, we get stuck in the rut and it's comfortable, but eventually, you know, our souls are calling for something bigger. You know, it's dull after a while if we always do the same exact thing. So we want to fill our baskets with a variety of experiences. So another metaphor really is about, you know, your state of mind is what are you feeding your mind? Right? What are you feeding your mind? And, you know, I talked about this one other time, those ants that especially will ruin our picnic of life, which is our automatic negative thoughts. Now, not everyone has automatic negative thoughts. I bet you probably don't have automatic negative thoughts, right? But where do they come from? You know, when we feed our mind with negativity, and I'm guilty of this as, as well as anybody else, when I turn the news on, and that's what I'm being fed, Negative news, negative news. But also, you know, the fear, the doubt, the insecurities that we may hold within us. Those are negative thoughts. We don't want to bring those to our picnic. Right? We want to bring joy. Right? So if those ants are ruining your picnic of life, how do you bring positivity instead? How do you change your negative thoughts? so that you're more positive? How do you reframe them? And it really is about looking at the bright side of life. Right? 
So when we reframe things, it's about coming through us as who we truly are, right? We are divine expressions of God. Right? We are God because we are that essence. Everything is God. I mean, the reality is everything is made of that substance, that divine creative substance. So you will read in a lot of spiritual books, you know, that we are that thing that is God. <laughs> and so if we remember that, then of course, and we know God is good, right? Second principle, then we are good. So that's how you reframe ant. You recognize I'm good. I'm compassionate. I'm empathetic, right? You have um, gratitude for your life. You, have, you are of service. Remember, we are sharing at our picnic, so we are being of service. So let's look at our second lesson here, which is a really important one, which is count your blessings. Think about it. When you go to a picnic, that picnic basket is overflowing, is overflowing. So let me ask everyone, what's your favorite food to bring to a picnic? What's your favorite food? Just shout out something. Eggs. What was it? Deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. Chicken. Chicken. Potato salad. Potato salad. What else? Wine. What? Wine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's one of my favorites too. <laughs> so it's, what was it? Fruit. fruit, of course, fruit. So here's an interesting thing. I'm going to actually hold this up so I can read it a little better. They did a survey. <laughs> of the most popular foods that are brought to a picnic. And the number one most popular food is actually sandwiches. 36% of people bring sandwiches to their picnic. And I, think of, I thought about that when I was, you know, my kids were younger, that's what we did. We made turkey sandwiches, ham sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, tuna fish, you name it, we had sandwiches. But then chicken, fried chicken, <laughs> was the second most popular. Deviled eggs is on there too, 20%. Watermelon, third. Potato salad, pasta salad, pie, baked beans. Wine wasn't here, but that's only because it was only food. They were, <laughs> they were asking people, right? But, you know, when you think about, um, I know there was one other thing I wanted to read here. Um, when you think about counting your blessings, right, obviously it's not just about the food, although right, if you have food, you already are blessed. Right? If you have a roof over your head, you are already blessed. So there are so many blessings. I mean, think about right now the gifts of Mother Nature, the blessings of rain, <laughs> you know, even though we don't want to get caught in it, the blessings of flowers, the blessings of the mountains and the rivers and the oceans and the entire planet. Right? We are so blessed. The gifts of family and friends, this community. So many blessings. The, the blessings of, of having a beautiful voice, right? That's a blessing. So when we think about it, we, there's so many things. Um, so yes, page 54. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes like I know there was something here I wanted to share. Page 54. And, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches. He does not say he will fill your lack. A need is a vessel to be filled while lack is a state of mind. So that goes right back to, you know, what are you filling your basket with? What are you filling your basket with? So we want to recognize all those blessings that we have. All right, let's look at this quote. This is one of my favorites from Mary Morrissey. Start living now. Stop saving the good china for that special occasion. Every day you are alive is a special occasion. Every minute, every breath, is a gift from God. And this was one I started practicing in my home many years ago. Because I grew up in a house where we had a formal dining room. And all the good china and the stemware was in the dining room. And it only got used on special occasions. Which was probably once a year for Thanksgiving. <laughs> we didn't celebrate Christmas growing up. Maybe we used it for Hanukkah, I don't remember. But it hardly ever got used. And it seems like such a waste, such a waste. So why save it, right? Get dressed up, <laughs> right? Wear your best. So when I was here, um, about a, I guess it was about a year ago, because it's almost summertime, and I went to Airly Gardens for their um, outdoor concerts, right? Everybody brings their, their picnic baskets, and there's lots of wine. <laughs> 
But here's a perfect example of not saving your china, you know, for special occasions. I would watch people bring these ornate, beautiful baskets, right? And they first put out that beautiful tablecloth, right? And it probably looked a little bit like this, <laughs> right? Beautiful tablecloth. That's where you start. That's your foundation. Everything that we do, right, we have to lay the foundation. That's our core beliefs. Those are our values. So what are you, you know, are you putting out your tablecloth on your life? So then they, you know, put out the table, actually a foldable table, and put beautiful dishes out, right? Beautiful china at their picnic. And, you know, then out comes all the food. So again, what are you nourishing your body with? Are you bringing scraps? Right? Actually, leftovers was on that list of what people bring to picnics, but it was 2%. It was the very bottom. And I was like, I don't know about that, because I think leftovers is a really good thing to bring to a picnic, especially leftover chicken, right? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the, the just incredible dishes that people would put out. So once again, right, are you bringing your best? Are you bringing enough to share? Are you sharing your gifts? with the world, right? We talk about this all the time. That's, you know, don't hold it in. Share your gifts. And then, you know, the chairs that we're sitting on. Think about that, too. Are they comfortable? I watch people bring these beautiful lounge chairs, and then I see others that are just kind of sitting on the whole, the cold, hard ground. And I'm like, oh, it's okay. Eh, well, it'll be all right. Think about that. Is that your attitude through life? Oh, eh, it's all right. Or are you comfortable? Right? Are you making yourself comfortable? Or are you settling? And then the last thing that is so much fun about a picnic, maybe not at Early Gardens, although I did see this, people playing games. Right? Do you, are you bringing games? Frisbees, tossing the, you know, the playing catch. Because life is meant to be enjoyed. That's the whole idea about a picnic, is we're outside, we're having fun. We're enjoying our lives. So when was the last time that you really did go have some fun, right? just for the pure enjoyment of it? So let's say our affirmation again. My basket is overflowing with abundance. My basket is overflowing with abundance. So let's take a look at our third lesson, which is you know living our spiritual principles. So let's take a look at this. And I'm, I know everybody's familiar with this. And I, there's so many different versions of this quote, depending upon which um, Bible you're reading. But bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple so that there will be plenty of food there. Put me to the test, and you will see that I open the windows of heaven and pour out on you abundance of all good things. And, you know, that is the the experience when we're at a picnic, right? That's the experience, too, when we go and we have community in, in, you know, the room over there. It's a table full of abundance and goodness. And, you know, the thing is, are we trusting in our own divine abundance? Or are we living in fear of scarcity? Are we just bringing the leftovers and that's it? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with those leftovers, but are we bringing our right mindset that there's going to be more? I mean, tithing really is a metaphor, when you think about it, for a basket full of abundance. It's a metaphor for a basket full of abundance, because what we give, what we give, we get back multiplied. We get back multiplied. So if we truly believe that life is a picnic, then we will bring more than enough to share. Have you ever like gone to, to a, a dinner party and you were bringing something and you felt like, oh my God, I'm just, there's just not going to be enough? Or you're, you're hosting a party and you're making food and you think, oh my God, this is just not going to be enough. And the next thing you know, you've got so much food, you could literally feed like an entire country. Because it's the mindset. It's the mindset. So uh, let's see, there's another quote here I want to read in the flow of life on this. 
All right, this is important too, because it is about mindset. You may pray and treat for prosperity, but until you get consciously and receptively into the flow, there will be no change. So, you know, we are the flow, but we block it. We block it. I don't know if I'm even going to get to this, but I've been reading another really great book I recommend called The Obstacle is the Way. And we are that obstacle. We get in our own way. And instead, we have to work with that. So we have to know that there's always plenty. We have to know that there's always plenty. All right, so let's review. Let's review our, our three lessons today. So number one, right? Fill your baskets with goodness. Fill your baskets with goodness. That means bring those positive experiences with you wherever you go. And if you've had a negative experience in your life, you don't need to drag that as baggage to the next picnic. Right? Leave that behind. As a matter of fact, just let it transmute into the nothingness of what it is. Right? Fill your basket, your mind, your body, your life with goodness because you are good. You are a divine expression of God. And count your blessings. No matter what you have, even if you're sitting in a box or you're standing on a street corner with a sign, recognizing that you have your body, you have your breath, you have community. There are so many things that we don't even recognize as blessings. So count every single thing that you have and count your blessings every day. And don't hide your gifts. Share them with the world. Share your blessings with the world. And the third one, as we've been talking about, is remembering that you know, we want to share our gifts with the world. We want to share our, not just our time and our love, but we want to share, you know, bring to the storehouse so that it can be multiplied. So let's do our final affirmation. My basket is overflowing with abundance. Let's say that again. My basket is overflowing with abundance. Actually, one more time and really feel like it is overflowing. My basket is overflowing with abundance. And so it is. Namaste. Ah, so speaking of baskets overflowing with abundance, it is time for our affirmative giving. And remember that our tithes do go, you know, into the storehouse. It is faith in our community. It is faith that, you know, our donations will open up the doors of heaven. And it does allow us to continue to provide a beautiful service for you every Sunday. <coughs> so let's do our, um, our mudra. Thank you. <laughs> go ahead. Divine, Divine love. love. Through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. to start again do you ever feel feel so paper thin like a house of cards one blow from caving in do you ever feel already buried deep six feet under screens but no one seems to hear a thing do you know that there's still a chance for you because you know that you you just gotta ignite the light and let it shine just on the night like the fourth of july because baby you're a firework come show them what you're worth make them go all 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 as
as you shoot across the sky. I, baby, you're a firework. Come on, let your colors burst. Make them go all, all, all. You're gonna leave them all in all, all, all. You don't have to feel like a waste of space. You're original cannot be replaced if you only knew what the future holds after a hurricane comes a rainbow maybe reason why all the doors are closed so you can up and up the one that leads to the perfect road like a lightning bolt your heart will glow and this time you'll know you just gotta ignite the light and let shine just on the night like the 4th of July cause baby you're a firework come show them what you're worth make them go all, all, all as you shoot across the sky I, I, baby you're a firework come on let your come You leave them all in all, all, all. Boom, boom, boom. Even brighter than the moon, moon, moon. It's always been inside of you, you, you. You just have to let it through. Cause baby, you're a firework. Come on, show them what you're worth. Make them go all, all, all. As you shoot across the sky, I, I, baby, you're a firework. Come on, let your colors burst. Make them go all, all, all. You're going to leave them all in all, all, all. Boom, boom, boom. Even brighter than the moon. Donations in these baskets, coming online, time, talent, it is all here for us to share and count our blessings every single day. And so I am so grateful for this community. We are also grateful to be at Unity of Wilmington. So we bless these ties. We release them into the world knowing that they are doing good work and return to all of us multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Wow, this has been quite the program today. But as all good programs come, this is getting to be towards the end of it. First of all, we have our prayer box over here in the corner, and Teresa Rodriguez will be our prayer partner for the day. So if you want to pray for anything, celebrate anything, please ask her to uh, join you in the process. The other thing about prayer today is we have the availability of oneness blessing, so if after the service you would like to have a oneness blessing, you may meet over in the corner in front of the sound booth and receive that, and that will be a good thing. Next, the ladies' lunch for May will be on May 3rd, which is a Wednesday, and it will be at the Oceanic. There's a sign-up sheet in the, parlor for the, in the community room for that. We have a new member class on May the 6th, which is a Saturday. So if you'd like to join us formally as a member of the church, please participate in that. It's about a four-hour class. Tell us a little bit about where we started, how we got to where we are, and where we're going. So please come and join us 
as a new member. And that will be on Saturday, May the 6th. Our directory will be available next month. You sign up online. That's the only way you can sign up for it is online. So I would also invite you all, before I let uh, Dr. Harris come up, we have been having rehearsals for Tuck Music, the Tuck Everlasting. Tuck Everlasting has, the cast has been practicing here for about a month now. And Katie, who is our, their music director as well as ours, has donated tickets. Those of you who signed up to potentially participate in this, stay after the service and we will let you know who has gratefully won them. So right now, Dr. Harris will come up and talk about his class that will be in May. Thank you, thank you, Lainey. Woo, what a great day. Thank you so much, Ellen. Wow, I feel like going on a picnic today. <laughs> and Tyrell, I, I was trying to contain myself. <laughs> and I wanted to sing with you, okay? But anyway, on May 20th, we are having a using the 12 universal laws of success workshop right here in the church from 9.30 until 1. And the purpose of the workshop is to take the universal laws of thought, of vision, to show you how to lay out your vision and your goals, how to focus on them to get them, make them manifest in your life. Look at the law of relationships, how to get along better with people, and of course the law of persistence, how to hang in there until it's done. So it's going to be a great event here at the church from 9.30 until 1. It's a workshop. So you'll get, as a part of the registration, it's $47. And we have a table outside to sign up. And uh, you get a copy of the book as a part of the class and a workbook. So it's going to be not a, a, a lecture, but it's going to be a workshop so that when you leave, you will be transformed. And this is a part of really the beginning of a whole series of things we're going to be doing here at the church to Elevate, stimulate, motivate, and keep us growing. Thank you, Lainey. And actually make our spirit home a great place to be. Home and welcome to us all. Please join us in our closing prayer. Stand. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well.
peace and love and joy out into our communities. Let's all go have a beautiful picnic today and every day because life is a picnic. Have a beautiful Sunday and rest of your week, everyone. Namaste.